Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar today. Hope you're all doing fine. Depending on where you're from, I would like to wish you a very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Today's topic, as you can see on the slide there, is how to use correlation rules for effective threat detection. Uh, before I say uh, anything more on the topic itself, I would just like to tell you what I mean by correlation and what I mean by threat detection. The term correlation here means the ability to take data in the form of logs from different parts of your network. So it could be logs from your network devices, such as routers, switches, and firewalls. It could be your file servers, your databases, your web servers, or it could just be almost anything on your network. Is the ability to take these logs, put them together, and identify patterns or relationships. So that's correlation. The phrase threat detection means very simply the ability to spot threats in the network. So that's what we're going to cover in this webinar. How can you use correlation to perform threat detection? Let me take a moment to just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ram and I'm a cyber security specialist at Manage Engine. I like to keep myself updated about the different kinds of attacks that hackers are attempting to use against organizations to steal data. I also analyze the ways in which the cybersecurity market is moving and what steps organizations can take to defend themselves. Now, one of the things that I like to do in my free time is ethical hacking. And I'm already, you know, I'm trying to get myself certified as an, um, you know, as an ethical hacker as well. Great, so now let's talk about what we have in store for today. Here's the agenda. We'll start by talking about the importance of correlating events from across your network. We'll then learn about correlation rules and how they work. We'll then look at pre-built correlation rules and how they help to detect threats. Then we'll look at custom correlation rules for unique use cases. Now, as we go through the webinar, I will also show you how Manage Engine Log 360, which is a comprehensive SIM solution, how Manage Engine Log 360 can be used for effective uh, real-time event correlation. So yes, broadly, this is the agenda, and it's time for us to get started. And we'll start off with this very, very basic question. What exactly is real-time event correlation? That's the big concept here. Take a look at this uh, image. You have an event A happening in one part of the network that you see here. Event A is happening in one part of the network. network. Likewise, you have event C and event D also happening in different parts of the network. Now, if these events were analyzed independently from one another, you'll never know if they are actually malicious. So if you, if you analyze these events one by one or separately, you might actually think that they are absolutely okay. There is nothing malicious about these events. But if you take these four events together as one sequence, you may well realize that there is something malicious going on. So the sequence is actually something wrong, something malicious going on. You can then take appropriate action to rectify the situation and save your company from a potential threat. At the end of the day, I'm sure that's what you want to do. Create value for your organization, save it from security threats, and save it a whole lot of money. Now, if these four events, A, B, C, and D, happen in one part of the network, they would probably be easy for you to track and identify that there is a lurking threat. But just imagine one thing uh, for a moment with me. Imagine that uh, this event A was an active directory log on by a particular user who is serving their notice. That is, they are going to leave the organization within the next two weeks. So that is event A, uh, AD log on by a user serving their notice period. Then this is followed by event B, uh, which is a GPO modification. A group policy object modification. And then even C, you, you've got members being added to a security group. And then finally, you've got even D, which is a file being accessed. Now, this particular sequence of events, unless you view it in, as one particular pattern, as one incident, you would never know that it is malicious. And that's basically the use case here. You know, This is a use case that we just looked at, a very, very simple use case, but a very practical use case too. So this is the kind of challenge that you want to address with event correlation. So with this particular example, this could be a case of an insider who's stealing valuable data from their company as they serve their notice period. Now, in my own experience, 
Uh, I've seen something like this happen in the real world. I've come across one case where a marketing director got access to the entire customer database and printed it out before leaving to work for a competitor. So this can happen in the real world. Anyway, I hope that you see the importance of correlation from this use case. Another important thing to note is that you absolutely need your SIM solution to be able to collect source and ingest logs from different parts of the network. You need the ability to source different types of logs so that you can correlate them if necessary to spot threat patterns. So that's what we, sh we show you here in this particular uh, image. You've got to have your centralized SIM solution and it's got to be able to collect logs from different parts of the network in different uh, formats and make sense of all of that and provide security analytics for you. Not just that, it's got to be able to correlate all of these events for you as a single sequence of events. Your SIM has got to have the ability to do that. Anyways, like I said, um, you've got to be able to collect logs, right? In order to, for you to be able to do, uh, do the correlation effectively, you've got to be, first of all, able to collect the logs from different places. So let's see how that works in a SIM solution like Log360. Uh, let me jump into the console of Log360 for you right here. Now, this is the main console of Log360. And you can see that it's a unified SIM that shows you everything that's happening on your network in real time. And on the left-hand side, you see that there are several different modules of Log360 here. So you've got a module called Event Log Analyzer, um, which is the log management module of Log360. You've also got yet another uh, module called AD Audit Plus, which is the Active Directory Management module. So anything that is happening um, on Active Directory, whether it's a group creation, a user addition into that particular group, or uh, let's say that a particular user is being uh, uh, you know, some uh, given certain privileges, everything can be tracked, even GPOs, you know, changes in the GPOs, everything can be tracked using this particular component called AD Audit Plus. Then I would like to take your attention to Log360 UEBA, which is the anomaly detection engine of Log360. And then you can also uh, take a look at this uh, component called Cloud Security Plus, which analyzes everything that's happening um, on your cloud services things like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud pla uh, Platforms, and your Salesforce. Anyways, uh, what I would like to take your attention to right now is this Event Log Analyzer module. Specifically, we wanna look at how you collect and source logs from different places in your network. So I've got an instance of Event Log Analyzer open for you right here to show how log collection actually works. So this is gonna help you bring in logs from different areas of your network and then it's gonna help you with event correlation. So to perform log sourcing, you'll first need to go to the settings tab on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just getting into the settings tab. And then here under configuration, um, let's say that you wanna add your network devices for monitoring and correlation. So you go into manage devices. And once you are there, uh, you can add your Windows devices, uh, this would include all servers and workstations that run on Windows operating systems. You can add your syslog devices. This would be your routers, switches, firewalls, your uh, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems, even your Linux and Unix machines. In fact, you can add any kind of device that generates logs uh, in the syslog format from, from this option here. And then you've got this. Uh, you've got the other option to add other devices over here. Uh, you can add your IBM AS400 machines and ESXi server over here from, uh, from your other devices. So that's how you do your log sourcing and your log collection. Now let's take a very, very practical example. Let's say that you want to add your syslog devices for monitoring and correlation. So obvious thing to do, let's go into syslog devices. And then um, let's go into add devices. Now here's where things can be automated to a certain extent. You can obviously key in the, the details here. That's the manual way of doing things uh, where you key in the host name along with the comma separator. Or you can do the more intelligent way. Uh, you know, you can discover an ad. And if you go into discover an ad, basically what you're doing is you're just specifying the IP address uh, or I should say the IP range, right? So you just specify the IP range and Log360 is gonna go ahead and scan all of those devices, all of those syslog devices 
that fall within that particular IP range that you have specified. Once that's done, it's just a matter of you choosing what uh, devices you want to set up for real-time monitoring and correlation. Once you do that, all the devices that you set up for real-time monitoring and correlation will show up in this list right here. And as you can see, the status shows listening for logs. Wherever it says listening for logs, it means that it is listening for logs in real time and real time correlation is going to be possible. You'll also have a few devices where it says success instead of listening for logs. This means that as a user, uh, we have specified it, uh, you know, we have scheduled the log collection. So we don't, we're not listening for logs in real time. We have actually scheduled it. A user has the option of doing, of going either way. They can schedule, uh, they can either schedule uh, this uh, or they can actually listen for logs in real time. But as a vendor, we always uh, tell our users to do this, to actually listen for logs in real time, because that's when threat detection becomes more strong. You're able to detect and stop threats in real time. If you listen for logs in real time, obviously. Right, so that's how uh, log collection and sourcing actually works. But apart from your network devices, like let me show you the other kinds of logs that you can get in for uh, correlation. You can manage your application sources. So things like your SQL servers, your web servers, your Oracle databases, all of those logs can be brought in as well. Uh, you can manage your threat sources. So here I'm talking about things like your data loss prevention systems, your antivirus, your FireEye, all of those devices, the logs generated by those devices can be brought in for uh, real-time correlation and monitoring. You've got your vulnerability scanners, right? Uh, very popular vendors such as OpenBAS, Nmap, Nessus, Nexpose, and Qualys, you can bring in those logs for real-time correlation and monitoring as well. So all of this can be done, but I have not yet told you about one very, very critical and important piece, and that is threat intelligence. Now, threat intelligence is also very, very important. This is, this is where you're basically working with threat feeds, different kinds of threat feeds, and you wanna use those threat feeds to help uh, in your correlation as well. You can do that by going into threat management over here. Uh, so once you go into threat management, uh, this is where you get to manage your threat feeds. And these events, like I said, your threat feeds can also be correlated within Log360. So it is pretty comprehensive and you need, to, you need all of this comprehensiveness. You, know, you need to be very, very comprehensive when it comes to today's era of sophisticated attackers. Uh, you've got to leave no stone unturned when it comes to your correlation capability. So what have we done so far? We have gone over the importance of correlation and we have seen how to organize our log data to make correlation possible in log 360. The next thing to do, let's talk about correlation rules. It's critical that you have the ability to work with correlation rules. I mean, just think about it. There's got to be a way that your SIM solution knows what patterns to look for. Once a particular correlation pattern is observed, your SIM solution can then alert you and tell you that you need to take action right away. This is where your correlation rules come into play. In an effective SIM solution, there are two types of correlation rules. You have your built-in rules, and then you've got your custom rules. The built-in rules come along with your SIM solution. These are rules that the vendor builds into the product, usually after talking to their customers, industry practitioners, and industry experts. So we'll see uh, how your built-in rules works in Log360 just now, um, so that you can take a look at, uh, at this practically. So let me go into Log360 and show this to you. We're gonna be looking at built-in rules. So here I am back into my event log analyzer module of log 360. And we'll be looking at built-in rules right now. So let's head over to the correlation tab on the top. And once this loads up, you'll see that there are a lot of different correlation analytics uh, available to you on the left-hand side over here. In fact, you've got different categories of correlation analytics. You've got things like user account threats, system and server threats, web server threats, database threats, ransomware attacks, uh, file integrity threats, potential Windows threats, potential Unix threats, and so on and so forth. In fact, you've got quite a lot of different categories here. 
so these are all your correlation um, you know, categories. And under each of these correlation categories, you've got your built-in analytics. So a very, very simple example, let me go under user account threats. You've got different things like your brute force attacks, excessive logon failures, excessive VPN uh, logon failures, 40 net successful different uh, location logons, you know, things that are indicative of something going wrong, right? Let's take a very, very simple example as a use case. Let's take a look at brute force attack, right? These are possible brute force attacks as noticed by log360 in our uh, test environment. Now, if you come over here on the right hand side, you get to see all the different kinds of or potential brute force attacks that have happened on the network for a given time range, which can be specified over here. So let me get a more comprehensive view. Uh, we have as many as 33 different brute force attacks that are being detected in that time range. So let me go ahead and uh, you know take a look at all of those different um, possible brute force attacks that have happened on the network. And let's pick on a particular user. Let's pick on this particular user called Vishnu. This is the username. And they are working on a Unix machine or the Unix machine is the one that's, you know, where this particular attack has been detected. This brute force attack has been detected. The IP address is this one specified right here. 192.168.213.161. And it is happening at this particular time. So all of this information um, is given to you. Now, if you go to uh, the event timeline, you get to see the sequence of events that happened so that this sequence actually got detected as a possible brute force attack by log360. So let me just scroll down here and you can see that it all started at this time on this particular date where an account failed to log on to a device in the network. And you also get to see the message as to why this happened. So you can see that it failed password for this invalid user called DJF from this IP address and this port, right? And then likewise, a few other um, things have also happened in quick time. Take a look at this, right? And for each of these events that are happening, a message is given so that you get um, more details about what really happened until, take a look at this, a few short seconds later, an account successfully logged on to a device in the network. And here is the message, accepted password for this user called Vishnu from this particular IP address and this port and SSH2. Now, if you go into details, you get even more granular details about what really happened. So you get to see things like uh, the severity, uh, the device type, the time, everything is given over here, the process ID, so all of that is also being picked up by Log360. Very, very empowering information to have for any security analyst, right? So this is how you can actually analyze the complete timeline of an event and see, of an incident rather, and see how, um, you know, how it was actually detected as a possible brute force attack in this case. Now, we spoke so much about brute force attack. But what are the rules? What are the correlation rules that really constitute a brute force attack? I mean, at the end of the day, we are talking about correlation, right? So we need to know what are the sequence of events that really constitutes this? What is the rule? What is the underlying rule that we are working with? So to take a look at the rule, um, let's go here into manage rule. And this is where you can take a look at all the pre-built and as well as the custom uh, correlation rules. So with brute force, obviously we are talking about a pre-built rule uh, within log 360. Let's search for it and type in brute force to take a look at what really is the rule that constitutes this attack. So go here and you get to see what really makes up this rule. Take a look at this. It seems like we are looking at two different actions. Action one, an account fails to log on to a device in the network and it's not going to happen just once or twice or thrice it's got to happen 10 times. That's the threshold limit. So we have set up a threshold limit and it's got to happen. All of these 10 different things or 10 occurrences of this account failure, log on failure have got to take place within two minutes. So all of that is action one. Now it doesn't stop there. Action one has to be followed by action two within one minute. And what is action two? An account successfully logs on to a device in the network. So. That is what constitutes this particular attack 
or this particular correlation rule. So that is the uh, brute force attack rule that we have actually set up. This is a pre-built rule available with uh, log 360. Right? So let's go back now. And I want to show you how you can actually use correlation in tandem with forensic analysis. Right? So let me go back into my correlation uh, page. So we were looking at the brute force attacks here. And we were looking at this particular user called Vishnu, right? So now take a look at this. So you have this uh, icon here with a magnifying glass and a fingerprint. This is a giveaway that you can actually perform forensic analysis right off of this console. Um, so if you just click on that, what's going to happen is you're going to be diverted onto this page where you can actually do a forensic analysis. So from correlation, you're you're getting diverted onto the search page. This is where you can uh, you can do your log forensics. And this query builder is done for you. It's ready made for you because you've just clicked on that icon. It's going to pick up from that particular correlation rule, all the users. So we were looking at two different users there, Vishnu and DJF. They were the two users. This was the IP address and this was the host type. So all of that is being built into this query builder. And you get to see all of the events that are associated with these parameters. So you get to see that there are as many as 23 different events. From here, what you can do is, uh, as a security analyst, you can go ahead and you can do a deep dive. You can use the elastic search capability of Log360 and drill down to find the root cause of a particular problem, right? So let's say that you wanna look at different processes. You just need to click this and it's going to show you all the different processes that were run, right? Um, or uh, I should say the process ID here in this case. Likewise, you can, you know, any part of this, uh, this information here is completely clickable. So you can just keep clicking in and taking notes, clicking in once again, taking notes. Basically, you're drilling down and zeroing in on a problem and getting to the root cause. So this is how you can actually use correlation along with something like log forensics to get to get to the bottom of a particular problem. So in this case, uh, we are trying to get to the, uh, to the bottom of that brute force uh, attack detection, right? So uh, let me go back, let me close this now. And let's take a look at correlation once again. And in fact, I wanna look at one more use case uh, because just like we saw for the brute force use case, you have uh, pre-built correlation rules for possible ransomware attacks as well. So that is another very, very important use case, especially in this day and age. You know, ransomware has become a huge threat. Uh, in the last 18 months, uh, you know, there were ransomware attacks such as uh, the coronavirus ransomware attack, very aptly named, right? <laughs> the coronavirus ransomware attack. So that was let loose on the, on the world. Many organizations actually fell victim to this particular ransomware attack. Likewise, there was one more very dangerous ransomware attack called the snake ransomware um, that, were, uh, that many organizations fell victim to. Um, so as a vendor, you know, we try to keep our solutions updated with the latest and most needed use cases. And we try to build in these use cases within our solution. So let's take a look at uh, a correlation rule for a possible coronavirus ransomware detection. So let me go into that right here so that you can see. And here are certain occurrences of possible coronavirus ransomware detections. And just like we saw earlier, if you go into the event timeline, you'll get to see the sequence of events that led to this being detected as a possible coronavirus ransomware attack. So let me just scroll down here and you can see that it all started at this time on this date where a file gets created on Windows. And then a couple of processes are being started and multiple files are being deleted. Now, that's, this is classic ransomware, right? Like, that's what ransomware does. Uh, you know, the file extensions are renamed or files are getting deleted, or, you know, there are cases where new files are being created, processes are being, being created. So that's what ransomware does. And basically, as a vendor, what we do is, we look at the signature, the telltale signs of a coronavirus ransomware, and we try to build that as a use case within the solution. So if you want to look at what really constitutes a coronavirus ransomware detection as a correlation rule, you can again go into manage rule and you can actually take a look at that. So let me go ahead and uh, do the search for you. So
So here's the coronavirus ransomware detection um, correlation rule. And you can see that this particular rule, once it loads up, you'll see that it's a little more complicated than the, the, than the simple brute force attack rule that we looked at earlier. Um, so you can see that action one is a file that is being created on Windows. Action two is a Windows process that is being started. Mind you, it's got to happen within 30 seconds. And then within 30 seconds of action two happening, action three has got to happen where yet another Windows process is started. And then within five minutes um, of that happening, you've got a file that is being deleted on Windows, not just one file, that's got to happen 10 times. So multiple files are being uh, deleted on Windows. So this is the classic telltale signs of a possible coronavirus ransomware attack. So that's what we have in the, in the built-in correlation rule here. Great. So, we have just spoken about uh, built-in correlation rules. So it's time for us to talk about our custom rules. Um, so let's talk about that. Because at the end of the day, you need the ability to create your own rules because whatever rule you get out of the box from your SIM vendor, it's just not gonna be enough. Your organization is unique and you may face a variety of threats that are unique to you. There is no way that anyone can predict what risks you're exposed to. And because of that, you need to write your own correlation rules and spot threats whenever those rules are violated. So we'll just take a look at how custom correlation rules works in Log360 uh, right away. So I hope you're all ready to look at that. Let's take a look at custom rules. Going back into the event log analyzer module of Log360 and Going, going into the correlation tab on the top. If you're going to manage rule, you have this option to create your own custom correlation rule over here. Just click on that. And this is the interface that you can use to create your own custom correlation rules. So we'll take a look at a particular use case right now. Uh, we'll take a look at an example of an intellectual property theft, something that can happen in the real world. And this intellectual property theft is gonna be committed by a trusted insider. So that's gonna be our, our use case. An intellectual property theft takes place when a sensitive or classified information gets accessed, right? Now, there have been cases where people have stolen very confidential trade secrets, and then they go on to work for the competitor or even start up on their own. Now, you need a way to defend against this. So let's see this example as I take you through it. Um, let's say that there is a successful Windows logon. So I'm just going to go here, a Windows logon. It's not any Windows logon, it's a successful Windows logon. So let me click on that. We are building action one as we speak. And it's not any successful Windows logon. This particular logon is gonna happen from a remote IP address. And mind you, it's not any remote IP address. This remote IP address is deemed to be malicious by our threat intelligence feeds. So already, Quite a few things are happening as far as action one goes, right? We have already put in a lot of uh, variables here. Now let's say that within two minutes of action one happening, so let's go ahead and build that into the rule. Within two minutes of that happening, let's say that there is a start of a process. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's a start of a process, this is action two. And within two minutes of uh, action two happening, let's say that there is a file permission that, that gets modified. So within two minutes of action two, there is a file permission that gets modified. Okay, so that is action three. And within two minutes of this happening, uh, Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say that uh, there's a firewall policy change. Now, isn't this very, very strange? Why is there a firewall policy being changed? So that is happening, that is action four. And within two minutes of action four happening, let's say that there's a file that is being um, accessed. Now take a look at this. Now, each of these five different actions, if they happen one by one, all together, isn't that very, very strange? 
or let me put it the other way let's say that you had no idea about action 2 3 4 and 5 you only had an idea about action 1 would you be able to say that action 1 all by itself is malicious mm, maybe not likewise with action 2 some windows process gets started it may or may not be malicious you can't really say likewise with you know action 5 a file gets accessed on windows okay fine a file gets accessed on windows it may not be malicious files get accessed on windows all the time but then when you build a correlation rule like this action 1 2 3 4 5 all happening within 2 minutes of each other this sequence is very very strange and in fact this sequence could be telling of uh, of an intellectual property theft right so that's the rule that we that we are building together right now i'm able to i'm unable to spell properly property theft and once you do that you just hit create once you hit create this rule gets you know created for you and once it gets created for you uh this rule will be available in the list of rules that you've got created uh, for your environment from here uh what you can then do is you can set the rule status to active so we've got all these rules set to active here you can deactivate it by the way but if you set it to active log 360 is going to actively look for instances where those correlation rules are getting breached so those five activities right action 1 to 5 that we created together just now log 360 is going to actively look for those and whenever um it's actually you know uh, detected when those five activities get detected you'll get to know about it as long as you check off this box so when you when you check this off when you say alert profile you're enabling it this particular correlation that's observed is also going to reach you on your alerts tab so let's go over to the alerts tab so this correlation rule that you've created whenever it's detected in the in the network it's going to reach you as an alert over here on the alerts tab great so now we have come the full circle right you have looked at how things like log monitoring from across the network so looking at different uh, data sources from different devices from across the network including threat intelligence we have looked at correlation and then we have looked at alerting right how all of this comes together so yeah that that's how it comes together but we are not done yet because when you receive this as an alert right when you receive this as an alert you are still waiting for you to be able to review the alert right ideally you've got to be able to get your sim solution to act on your behalf to respond on your behalf automatically because that's where the value lies that's how you can really really create value for your company with these automated uh, you know response uh, rules and that's what you can actually do with your workflows so if you go into workflow over here right you can actually create a workflow so let me just show that to you using the drop drop drag and drop feature so you have different things like logic where you can uh, add in a time delay you can have network actions such as ping and trace route you can have processes uh, different things that you can do with processes now this particular correlation rule that we created together right just not too long ago uh, we said that uh, we were looking for the start of a particular process so with a with a workflow with a response workflow we can go ahead and stop that particular process right we can we can do that we can add that as part of the workflow likewise we can do things like shutting down a particular system so we can stop the process and then we can shut down the system um we can in case there is a usb that's involved let's say that it's a data exfiltration attempt somebody is plugging in a usb and they are trying to copy data we can actually have that as part of the workflow and you know we can have the system take that particular response action automatically um we can also do other things on active directory such as disable a user delete a user or disable a particular computer um so all of these different things can be done we can also take some other actions like add uh, outbound and inbound rules um so this is on the cisco level so so all of these things can be done as workflow now so it doesn't really stop at alerting we are going one step further we are using correlation in tandem with alerting and we are using alerting in tandem with uh, automated response workflows 
So that's how an effective SIM solution like Log360 is going to create value for both you in, in a way that you know it's going to make your job a lot more simpler so that you can uh, focus your efforts on the more important things. And it's going to help you create value for your company. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want to do. You want to make your company safe. Right? So uh, that is about the response workflow. Now, there's one more thing that, that we need to talk about. And let me quickly show that to you as well. Because it doesn't just stop at the work, uh, response workflow. Uh, you can do uh, a ticketing integration. Let's say that you're using a solution like uh, Manage Agent Service Desk Plus, which is a ticketing tool, right? Or you're using something like BMC Remedy, or uh, you're using uh, Zendesk or Kayako, or any of these other solutions, Jira Service Desk. So uh, Event Log Analyzer, or Log360 rather, I should say, uh, enables you to integrate with all of these ticketing solutions so that you can manage the incident response from that particular console. So any alert that you receive on, uh, on log 360 can be sent over to your ticketing tool so that you can manage, uh, you know, you can manage the incident from, uh, from your service desk uh, tool itself. Uh, all you need to do is give your credentials. And then uh, once you, you know, save it, uh, all of these logs will be sent over to, uh, over to your uh, ticketing tool and you can manage it from there. Incident response done very, very simply. Right. So basically, what did we do today? Let me go back into the presentation. We saw four different use cases. The first use case that we saw was abnormal AD logon, followed by a lot of strange events, ultimately resulting in a file access. We also looked at possible brute force attacks where devices simply did not log on to the network and ultimately they logged on to a device in the network. And we looked at the rules behind that, uh, the correlation rules behind that brute force attack. We looked at coronavirus ransomware and the telltale signs of this particular ransomware and what correlation rules we, you know, pre-built correlation rules can be used to detect this. We also looked at intellectual property theft and how you can create your own custom correlation rules to do this, to detect a possible intellectual property theft. Now, the major point that I would like to say is it does not really matter what SIM solution um, you use, I mean, you can use log 360. Maybe you find some other SIM solution that you want to use. That's absolutely fine. But what I would like to drive home to you right now today is make sure you use correlation along with alerts, automated workflows, and ticketing tool integration. That is going to be very, very critical for you. A very important capability to have for any security analyst. Okay. Um, Great. So at this point of time, what I would like to do is I would like to, uh, you know, take your attention over to this particular ebook. It's a very, very uh, simple read. Some of you may have heard of the MITRE ATT&CK uh, framework. It's a framework that's been in effect since, or that's been in force since uh, 2015, uh, when it was first introduced. And over the last two years, many organizations are using it. It's a very nice way uh, to look at the different threats that uh, your company might be exposed to. Um, so it tells you different tactics, techniques, and real life examples of these tactics and techniques being implemented by attackers around the world. So if there are particular use cases that you are very, very concerned about, uh, the MITRE ATT&CK framework will be very useful to you and your company. So I thought I would uh, share this particular resource with you. You can access this whenever convenience is permit. Um, so let me just quickly share this with you so that you can access this at your whenever time, when, you know, whenever you have the time. Maybe tonight, uh, you know, when you're uh, about to go to sleep, you're a little bored. Give this a read for sure, and let me know how that goes. So I just posted that on the on the chat for you, and uh, let me go back into the presentation. Yeah, so that basically brings me to the end of the webinar today. But in case you have any more questions once this webinar gets done, um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. My handle on Twitter is coffee and cybersecurity. These are the two things that I like, coffee. I really love coffee and I like uh, cybersecurity as well. So you can find me on Twitter. 
or you can email me at ram.b at manageengine.com. Uh, anyways, I'll still be online for the next 10 minutes, taking all of your questions over chat. Thank you. Uh, you've been an amazing audience from the kind of questions that I've got. I'll be answering those questions. And until next time, please take care and have a great rest of the day. Thank mm -hmm. you.